This me meeting is being recorded and videotaped. <coughs> so um, first we will have introductions. So we'll go around and see who we are. Jay, you want to start? Oh, Gabe Fortin, member. Okay. Daniel Langer, member. Ruth McGrath, member. Susan McCrary, vice chair. Tori Eklund, chair. Patty Shaughnessy, ADA coordinator. Roy Martin, member. Cindy Shubank, member. Great. Do we have any members of the public? Yes, we do. Uh, June Malley would like okay. to um, speak. Public, co public comment is now. Okay. Uh, good evening. My name is June Malley, and I'm part of a group that is, is concerned about <coughs> giving access to everyone in North Anthony. On November 1st, my group and I had a meeting with the co-owner and manager of Thorns Market. Uh, we wanted to explain some of our concerns about access to Thorns. Uh, the meeting was, went very well. We were well received. And, uh, as we spoke of our concerns, <coughs> the management and the maintenance had told us that they had plans to further access to Thorns. They were aware of the, po of the problems that people were having getting in and out of Thorns. Uh, we made a few suggestions which they did agree to address. And that was the one suggestion we made is that they didn't put their holiday de decorations over the push button in the Skyway to Thorns. Mm -hmm. uh, they agreed to that and uh, we checked. They did do that. They stopped right. short of the, of the push button so you can see it. Mm -hmm. Uh, we also suggested that they uh, put up a small sign or something uh, pointing out where the button was because a lot of people were saying they couldn't find the button. I was one of them. I looked up and down that place and I couldn't find it. It was right by the door but it was on the left hand side. And it's sort of in the corner and you can't really see it that well. And uh, they agreed to do that. They also said that they they were aware of the problems they were having, uh, that people were having coming in and out, and that they were in the process of making plans to correct some of the, uh, some of the faults there. Uh, right now, they're more they're more concerned with uh, in-house problems that they're having and they have to address those first before they really, you know, think about putting push buttons and other things. And uh, we offered to work with them to address the problems as, you know, as we could and uh, they seem sort of lukewarm on, on the idea, but we'll, we'll keep poking at them. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That is my report. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay. Um, our next agenda item is the approval of the minutes from the October 15th meeting. Mm -hmm. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Who, who got the so was that Roy or Dan? The second? Mm -hmm. both. Okay. We both said it. Okay. Um is Nicole Rowan here? No, not yet. yet. <coughs> okay. Is um Nancy Forrestall here? No, she was told not to be here okay. until um five thirty. So, so um while we're waiting, um I'm wondering have we 
Have people had a chance to read the bylaws? Yes, Just ma'am. Briefly. Okay. Do we want to... Um, let me just ask, I'm trying to assess because I'm thinking if it's a quick thing, we could just approve them. Do people have comments or questions and feel like we need more discussion time? I think they're good because I think they're broad and they should be broad to a certain extent. I um, think but yet they represent what we do. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think they're very good. Um, so, Tori, can I just make a little, uh -huh. we can always amend them at a later point. If we go along and find there's something in there that we don't like. That's a good point. You know, so, mm -hmm. yeah, you can always amend here. Your so would, yeah. would someone like to make a motion to accept these bylaws? I will as an official new member. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ruth makes a motion. Sweet. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Mm -hmm. Aye. So just a comment Great. about the bylaws. Um, Ruth McGrath, uh, Councilor Labarge, and myself work on the bylaws. And we had a, an assortment of bylaws that we went with um, mm -hmm. to pull out what we wanted for our specific mm -hmm. um, COD. And everybody would have gotten a draft copy, so, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we'll make sure everybody gets another copy. Thank you. I thought they were excellent, and now we've approved them. So, um, we're still waiting. Um, what were the I have items? I have an item as well. Yeah, do yeah, yeah. you want to go down you to the other? We can sure. Why don't we do that? Susan, you want to bring up your item? At the last uh, meeting, we were told that if we went to one of the restaurants, yeah in town um, that will be having large print and braille to definitely report back. So I made a point. Um, went to Pizzeria Paradiso that we go to all the time. It was, ah. it was packed actually, it was this past um, Saturday, not Friday night. It was packed. So we sat at the bar and the bartender was wonderful. I asked her about the large print and braille menus and she said, yeah, I think we have this, but I have not a clue where. Let me see if I can find it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she came back about 15 minutes later. She's like, I'm really sorry. I don't know where they are. And I asked her, and you don't know where they are. You know, so that was it. Oh. Yeah, she said, you don't know where they are? She, did, she knew That's what they had. Right. I know. I know, because I laughed her. I said, come on now. I've got to report back on this. <laughs> because I said I would. Mm -hmm. She's like, oh, yeah, I have no idea where they are. And I asked her, and they don't know where they are. Well, the thing is, braille, the Braille menus aren't anything, any, or even the large ones, they're not small. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, no not kidding. kidding. And she did make an attempt to go look. And it's not anything that can just be easily replaced either, so I'm yeah. hoping that so. they find them. Well, maybe you could call and um, follow up and just say, oh, I, you know, I'm a customer. Have you found your large print yeah. or Braille menus yet? Good point. Good point. I'll do that. Uh, I'll do that. So I time. also was there good. on Friday. But I'm looking for the decal that says we have large print menus oh, and real menus. Okay, yeah. But I didn't see it anywhere on the windows. I didn't, but you know what? We were there. It was dark, so we yeah. didn't notice it. So this well. follow up with them would be great. Yeah. Okay. I'll, okay. I'll check into that yeah. too. That would be great. If Patty, did you say that you had an item too? Yes. Um, there's been discussion with the DPW and uh, some uh, folks in the community about uh, crosswalks and making them um, easier to cross if you're sight impaired and um, so that's up for discussion and if they are going to do anything with any of the intersections they want to kind of um, lump them all together mm -hmm. um, you know, to go is that the bit. texture right before you make the cross if there's texture on the ground it's yellow and it's texture that you step on um, well, that, you, that, that's what they are talking about. That's what they're talking yeah, about. That's okay. something that that's what I thought could you be meant. done. So, uh, you know, in terms of um, crosswalks, because here in this area, um, we have a couple um, persons with um, sight impairment going down Fruit Street and down mm -hmm. Con Street. Yeah. I also know, Susan, you come down South Street. Oh, yeah. Um, so, you know, those intersections. The hard one would be... Oh, you mean there? Okay, yeah. The hard one would be... And we've Old talked about South. this before, yeah. is the intersection of Elm, mm -hmm. Date, Main, New South Street, that mm -hmm. it's just so complicated there. Um, yeah. So I, it, uh, what I could do is just ask everybody to think about areas, not just in Northampton, it could be up in Florence, mm -hmm. too. So what are they thinking about doing? Are they thinking about putting sound? or? Um, well, that's one of the things that could be done. What um, else could they do, though? Because I know on Old South and South, I mean, it's all residential, we drive people. Crazy, I think. Yeah. 
Um, to so, say. yeah, now, and I have to say, I, I apologize, I don't know everything else that okay. was right. um, within the, the right, request. So the areas of, um, okay. Mm -hmm. So if you come up with anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so go over the ones you already have, again, so we can make note. Well, the, the concern from um, a community member was uh -huh. down here on Old South, yep. crossing from Cons over to mm -hmm. Old South to yep. the other side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's um, a problem. Because there is a sound uh, audio down by um, the intersection of mm -hmm. Main, um, King, Pleasant, and Pleasant. King Yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. I have a question about that one, Ned. Have you heard that one lately? I, I haven't heard it. Oh, I heard it today. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I crossed yeah. today and I heard it. I cross there all the time. I mm -hmm. love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, um, I go, I walk through there driving and, and yeah. you know, I, I haven't heard it. So, you know, when you drive it and you don't hear it, mm -hmm. of course. So what I'll do is I'll send everybody an email to uh, okay. fill you in more <laughs> on what I'm talking about um, because I'm I'll definitely give us some more too. Yeah. Uh, still on Nicole? You know, I think I told Nicole to come at 10 after 5. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, well it is almost 10 after I, 5. I do have something I'd like to bring up. Now over there at the Salvo House, uh, they have the you no know, parking sign where they have the entrance to the uh, uh, sidewalk, right, mm -hmm. in the street, mm -hmm. and uh, and they're worn right off. You can hardly read them, right? and I have to keep on reminding people you can't park there. Uh, you know, people will pull up and they'll park right there, and this is where the entrance way is, and they park right there where the entrance way is. And there was one woman that she tried to get by this car and her wheelchair tipped over and, oh um, yeah. you know, right, it made me furious, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. So I keep telling people and, you know. It, you know what to do? Yeah. Make up a few signs that say you'll be towed next time you park here and I bet you it gets around quick. Well, oh, stick a I, couple I, little things I on put, their windshield. I put, a, I put things right on the window of the car yeah. if they're parked there. Yeah. Right. And I tell people, you know, Park there long enough, take your groceries out, mm -hmm. put them up there, and then you got to park somewhere else. Yeah. You know, I said, load and unload them, all right, I don't mind. And especially because the buses come around the corner, when they come around the corner, yeah. the cars park there, they can't get by them. Yeah. And then if they're parked up here, so uh, yeah. I got on housing about it, yeah. right? and I told them, I said, if you give me the red paint, I'll paint it. Well, they give me a, they give me a quart of red paint. <laughs> You know, to paint the, the curb. So, and the signs, I told them, and they said, yeah, they get get replacement and uh, same old signs. They just worn right off, you can't read them. How long ago did you ask for them? Like a couple I've of months? Been, I've been on them for the last couple of months. You know, I've been on David Adams and, and uh, of course, John Height and me and I get along, so. Well, why don't you send a letter from the Tennis Association um, well, instead of just asking? Well, no, yeah. no, I did. I, I, I asked over there at their meeting. Oh, uh, the House of the board. Yeah. Oh, that's a good board. idea. Yeah. Yeah. I, and, uh, and my response was, yeah, we, we have new signs for them. We'll get them up there. And right. nothing, so. Okay. Maybe uh, a little nudge for me. Because I'm, I'm basically John Height said that and John Height said that the uh, okay. tennis yeah. association is nothing but Okay, well we'll see. I think that, I think I heard somebody come in and I'm yeah. not sure. I don't see anybody then. The door did something, but I'm just wondering if um, unless Mike Napier's here. Is, no, it's Mike. Okay. Um. Is it something quick? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Um, in front of Memorial Hall, in the parking, beach, the parking lot between Memorial Hall and City Hall, the, when you drive in, the far right corner is a handicap spot. That's the one I use all the time because I record all these meetings and everything. Um, the sidewalk there, I've fallen three times. So oh, luckily, really? luckily, it's coming wow. into my car because it's there. Oh. But it's all broken up, and the sidewalk is about two inches above the curb. So there's like a big crack, about you know, four inches wide, and then a two-inch drop. It, in the dark, when I'm there, it's very hard. Where is it? 
between City Hall and Memorial Hall, that parking lot yeah. in the back, yeah. uh, the parking space in the front is usually filled because the custodian works at night to keep the building open and he uses that parking space, the other handicapped parking yeah, space in there. So Because he can? He can, yeah, okay. he's legal. But mm -hmm. I don't know if there's anything we can do about getting that straightened out like the other mm -hmm. ones, but we sure help me out. Um, <laughs> so the, with the space, the parking space, where is it that you get up on the sidewalk? Cause on the left-hand side. On the, the, the so you get out cut, of the car and then... Right, okay. The ramp is right in front of the car. When you pull your car in, you've blocked the ramp. Oh. So I can't go up in front of my oh. car. So I have to go up over the curb and I lean on the car. But coming out, I don't always have my hand on the car. I, I tend to forget sometimes. Uh, well, I'm going to be going up to uh, City Hall tomorrow, so I'll check that out. And then, um, you know, does it... Runs right in front of the tax Yeah, yeah. I think that, that's a problem. Review. Actually, it's a problem because you can't even... You can't use the ramp there because it's actually the parking place. It's mostly it's me crazy. because I'm there at night after hours. I know during the day mm -hmm. people can see it. Yeah. So I'm being very selfish. <laughs> Uh, no, because they, you're not the only one that uses it, though. I'm sure so is it a parking problem. space so that you can use a ramp there, or is it the only just a regular is, parking space? It's, it's a, there's a ramp, but it's right in front of the car. Yeah, you can't get okay, so it's a designated handicap spot yeah. with a ramp. Okay, yeah. Because some handicap spots aren't with ramps. Yeah, this mm -hmm. one has a ramp. Okay. Yeah, the one at the other end doesn't have a ramp. Okay, so yeah, okay. Yeah. I'll check it out. And then does the, the com commission want to... Um, send a letter to. I think it's a good idea. It's actually a city property. It should be accessible. Okay. Well, I well, it's accessible, but um, maintain it. Fix it. Mm -hmm. I mean, would it be a matter of just putting some cement in to even it off? Is that what you're saying? It sounds like I it's something like that. I don't know if they can. They can fix the Actually, sidewalk that way, yeah. but where the 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 sidewalk comes out and then there's a drop and then there's a mm. big mm -hmm. cement curb. Uh -huh. So there's like a, a step almost, only it's only about two inches. You know, you yeah. expect the sidewalk to come out where oh, the curb is. I know is. what you're saying now. I understand what you're saying now. Yeah. That's easily a trip. Yeah, and it's kind of torn up in there. There's big cracks and yeah. there's one four inch area that's all gravelly. Those I'm pretty good at, but that drop I hit it every time. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't mm -hmm. hard to mention it to them. See if they if they can fix it. They yeah. You know, um, see if they can do it. Um, Cynthia wants to say something. Okay. Right. Uh, recently, I called the DPW because I was campaigning for the election, and I was holding a sign. Uh, and the intersection of Ryan Ro Road and Florence Road, mm -hmm. and one of the curb cuts. The curb cut itself was okay, but the cement that was behind it was all broken up. And I counted more than 35 uh, breaks in the mm -hmm. cement. So they said they were going to do a work order. Oh. And I haven't followed up to see if uh, they have done anything. I, I don't know how fast these things, uh, you know, take. Mm -hmm. But um, it was, it's definitely a hazard mm -hmm. for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's good, that you, it's good that you actually brought it to their attention. Yeah. And, and maybe we need to follow up. I don't know. If they, do they even do much of this in the fall? Or do they usually do these things in the spring? Do you know that? It seems like there's construction everywhere. Right now. All the time. <laughs> okay. I just, at the winter, I don't know what they can do with yeah. cement. And I feel like, like it's cold. it would be logical. And it's cold now. I feel like they would be probably doing that in the spring. That would be my guess. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, usually the same thing goes with cement. Uh, and need the heat. If it's something that's really mm -hmm. pressing, they use the uh, I just Yeah. What time is Nancy coming? Nancy, Nancy will be here at 30, so I don't know what's up in the I think Nicole must have forgotten. It sounds like there's activity out there. Though. Yeah, it sounds like somebody mm -hmm. Nicole was um, here for a ridership meeting last Wednesday. Yeah. It was held here. Um, 
I had there were a number of people here, I and uh, she reviewed all the changes with the new system for PBTA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I figured I would hear it here, so. Well, there are many. Comment. Yeah. I, I mean, I, if she wanted to come, so I'm sure she'll be here. I, I have no idea people? why she's not. I'm going to guess that she probably forgot or something. I don't think she's coming at this point. That's funny. Um, okay. Okay. With the many I people mean, from over there. Mm -hmm. So, I posted um, it. Yeah, there were a couple of people I didn't know, so maybe they were from there. But I posted came it from on the board, so. Yeah. Yeah. As I understand yeah. it, they're moving to a new system that's going to involve less manpower and more computer power. And it's, it has to do with scheduling and also mm -hmm. it's going gonna, it's gonna to evolve to we're just going to get automated calls like the night before letting us know right. what our trips are going to be. But I'm not sure the question that I had had that I, I guess I'll just find out. I was hoping to ask her today, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Um, was how that will affect people who have standing rides in the morning. Like, will I have to call every day and request the same ride or will they still honor the standing? But in which case it won't really be that much different because they change my time every night anyway now. It doesn't matter whether a human being is telling me or whether a computer is telling me. Right. So every supposed to get a call back that the night before your ride. The, the, yeah, you won't have that. You won't know when your ride is going to be until the night before. Right. But the system, the new software, it's supposed to be more efficient. That right. you're not riding all over the place in order to the, get from point A. The to concern point B. that I have mm -hmm. is that computers only do what they're told to do by human beings. So if we still have inefficient schedulers who don't know what they're doing, that's what's going to be communicated to the new system. The new system isn't going to just magically know things. It's only going to know what it's told. So I'm hoping that it's going to work. Well, they started this weekend, so. Well, my ride was messed up this morning. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Blame it on the computer. Well, how was it messed up? <laughs> um, it was they were picking up someone in Williamsburg and were saying that they were <coughs> going to be able to get me in a much shorter amount of time that they could. So I knew that it would make me late. And fortunately, this morning I had another option, so I took it. But other days I won't. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying that I hope it will. I hope that it'll be straightened out and it will be good. But we'll see. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, I guess we have a few minutes until. Nancy comes, so. So Nancy Forrestal, the parking clerk, parking she's enforcement here. administrator, mm -hmm. she's here. Oh, Nancy, come on in. <laughs> I just didn't want to interrupt. Oh, no problem. You the door <laughs> <eye. laughs> you know, It would probably be best if you were down there, Nancy. All right. And so um, I, if you don't mind going on, um, well, you can sit down first. We'll, we'll let you catch your breath. <laughs> um, because our first uh, speaker isn't here. So if you don't do you mind, mind starting a little early? No. Okay. That would be great. So welcome. Um, I'm Tori Eklund and I'm the chair of the Commission on Disability and we're very happy to have you here. So um, thank you. Go ahead. All right. Well, my name is Nancy Forrestal and um, I'm the parking clerk for the city of Northampton. I was um, before that, I was the hearing officer for the city of Northampton. Parking appeals, you know, I would review those and decide, you know, whether or not we could dismiss the ticket based upon the information provided to us. Um, and before that, um, I was police officer for 30 years. So I am bringing to um, the position that I'm in now, um, I hope, uh, a lot of information from you know, out in the community as far as parking and congestion and difficulties that, that we may be having. Um, and I've been around in the Northampton area um, for, I don't know, 30 years too, so um, I, I'm pretty familiar with Northampton. Um, but I'm here tonight <coughs> to talk, you know, with you and to get some input from, from um, the commission um, to answer any questions that you may have about parking, um, any concerns that you may have, to try and provide you with any information and to get feedback from you all so that I can take that back to, to my office in, in an attempt to improve the services that we're providing to the community. Okay. Um, so can you just define what your department does? 
Well, when the parking division was dissolved by the mayor, the idea of parking, all of the tasks were split in half. We have the parking clerk's office that handles the money and the legality of parking. We help to craft ordinances. We handle the appeal system, any hearings. We handle the permit system, all enforcement of parking infractions. So we're a pretty busy group of folks, as you can imagine, when it comes to parking here in Northampton, which is kind of a difficult thing, to say the least. So we wear a number of different hats. I just came from the traffic, the transportation and parking commission meeting, and I sit in on those every month to make sure that if they have any questions that we may be able to provide any information for, answer any questions, and also so that I know what's kind of the hot topics out there when it comes to parking. So that's where I'm most concerned. And I'm just going to add that Nancy and I have worked on a couple different HP spots up in Leeds. You had gotten a call from, or somebody came in your office, and they wanted another HP spot, and then I brought it forward, and then it was approved, and then it got put in. And then there are some other individuals who may have had an issue, or not necessarily a ticket, but Nancy worked with them. So I think it's great that there's a concern and assistance to people with disabilities through your office. Well, as a disabled veteran myself, it's something that I take truly to heart. And it's an important topic because we have to make sure that we reflect the needs and the concerns, the requirements of everyone in our community. So we have to make sure that the accessibility is there. And we want to make sure that that includes ensuring that the handicapped spots are not, the use of them are not abused. And unfortunately, that does take place on a very regular basis. I think as it stands right now, calendar year, I took a quick look at it. We've had 39 violations that have been paid since January 1st at a rate of, what, $100 a violation. So that's just since January 1st. And that's people just arbitrarily deciding that I can't find parking, so I'm just going to park in that spot. Or I'm going to be here for a minute. I'm just running in. I'm just running in. And, you know, if somebody who needs this spot comes along, I'll move. Well, they're going to drive past because people are going to see the spot being taken. Right. So that's our feeling on that one. Yep. We also, through our traffic enforcement officers, are making a very concerted effort to identify the misuse of handicapped placards. Let me just run a few things past you. In 2011, we confiscated 35 forged or altered or misused disability placards. Some of those, now this is 2011, some of those were as old as placards that have been out there being misused since 2003. 2012, 51 of them. As old as 2003. This year, just up until now, and we're not even finished with the year, 39 of them 
uh, ranging as far back as 2006. When you say misuse, do you mean pe other people using the handicap placard instead of the person it was given to? Yes, good okay. question. Being misused by uh, a family member, mm -hmm. often an adult child um, of that person who is supposed to be using it, um, or and they've decided to use it so that they can park conveniently. Um, I think the one that uh, raised my hackles the, the, the worst, um, one of our parking enforcement officers confiscated um, a handicap placard that had been issued to a woman who had passed away and was now being used by her adult son so that he could park in uh, handicapped designated spots while delivering food. Oh, wow. That stuff is happening. Out there. Mm -hmm. huh. And that's why we're taking it so seriously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How would you figure that out? Yeah, I was going to ask that yeah, too. I was, I was curious. I was wondering <laughs> that. You know, um, the officer is very observant. Um, and he was standing there along Main Street and watched um, a guy come running out of, you know, it was, uh, it was Delivery Express, watched a guy come running out of one of the restaurants with all the bags, ran over to a car, parked in a handicapped spot, jumped in, hmm. and as he was um, about ready to leave, mm -hmm. the officer went up to him and said, Excuse me, um, I see that you have a, a, there's some of the disability placards that are still out there that became obsolete in 2006. I don't know if some of you Oh, are those there. Are, yeah, they replaced yeah. them with the little, yeah, the hanging ones now. Yeah, and then they went to the hanging mm -hmm. ones. Mm -hmm. Well, he saw that one sitting there. So he said, you know, excuse me, um, you know, could, is this yours? And he said, oh, no, that, that's my mother's. Really? Was she with you when you were parked here? You know, did you just go and drop her off or something? <coughs> oh no, you know, and, and came to find out through conversation that he was using his mother's handicap placard. So that wow. Was there a different violation for something like that for fine? Well, or what, what is the we situation? did that should be yeah. in cases like that. Yeah. We turned that over um, with our case file to um, the. The uh, registry, mm -hmm. um, and we file an abuse <coughs> of that handicap placard mm -hmm. um, with them, and they can hit that person with a $500 fine, yeah. suspension of their driver's license. Mm -hmm. it, it becomes, you know, it, it mm. ups it enough. Right. Yeah. It ups oh, it yeah. Much. Um, so when we run across cases like that, then definitely, um, we've had people who um, will. Some people are very artistic. They're very good at it. They'll actually cut out the uh, the dates and then they'll, you know, create their own little lettering and numbers and, you know, paste it in place. And so some people will really go a long way when it comes to this. Um, the picture. What's that? The picture. Yeah, the picture. We've had people who... Um, have replaced the picture on the back, taken a uh, family members and you know, cut out that picture and then put their picture in, in place. Um, and how do you figure that out? out? Yeah, how do you figure it out? Know because that you have did that. Yeah. Oh, well, oh you can see what they like yeah, yeah. side of it. Yeah, but a lot of times they have the covering. Like there's a covering <coughs> over my picture. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Um this so you can't really tell. You can't right. really tell who um, unless you take it off. Um, yeah, but there's a number on, on your on your black <coughs> Yeah. That P number that's on there, okay, yeah. that gets assigned to your driver's license. Um, but also, in this particular case, it's often those those old ones that became obsolete uh -huh. in 2006. Yeah, the big, big square ones, ones yeah. Because yeah. the picture's on the back. And yeah. when we see those, we, we know that it's an obsolete handicap placard. Yeah. Um, also, I don't know if you've noticed, but the, uh, the hanging placards now, the... Um, expiration date has gone from the bottom to the top um, because people would tuck them down um, on the dashboard 
and then mm -hmm. they would cut off that bottom part. So that's to okay. so our enforcement folks. They mm -hmm. see that and they're like, mm -hmm. and then they'll call in that P number, and then we can tell them whether or not by running it through the registry whether or not that's. Huh, that's um, interesting. Yeah, you know, expired mm -hmm. placard. Yeah. So um, you know we're trying our best. Mm -hmm. Our officers are being um, very observant. Um, they've seen a lot of different things, a lot of different techniques that yeah. folks will use to try and, um, you know, like cover, hang things over top of them <laughs> in a dirty mirror. Um, if it's printed in red, the numbers are printed in red on it, that's a temporary one. I don't know if you've ever seen that, but no. mm -hmm. if you have a placard now, mm -hmm. all lettering, the numbering on it is in black ink. If it's in red, it's a temporary one with a definite expiration date. Um, so those ones are, are some of the ones that are often misused. <coughs> what is the red ones? I've seen a few red ones mm -hmm. yeah, the handicap placards. Uh, you may have seen ones from out of state. There I are some from other states that are red. They're not always blue. Yeah, I moved up here from Connecticut. In Connecticut, they're red. Oh, yeah. Temporary yeah. ones. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what I saw. Yeah. Uh, and some of them are, are like the ones that we have that are kind of the, you know, the more malleable and some of them are the hard, hard plastic. So mm -hmm. there's different, there's different ones. Some of them have a little punch out dates on them that people will then, you know, try and fill in that punch out <laughs> hole and punch out a different hole on it mm -hmm. to, make, to make it go longer. Um, so we're, we're doing our best to be as observant as possible on that. That's great. And yeah. now your office um, issues temporary um, <coughs> HP permits? We issue, every town and city in Massachusetts at, um, has the right to issue out temporary um, uh, HP placards. Hmm. And uh, we can do them up to three months. Mm -hmm. And then what we'll do is allow one at the most two extensions beyond that. Um, and mm -hmm. often somebody who's had knee replacement, hip replacement, yeah. uh, you know, surgery on mm -hmm. something that keeps that person from being able to walk mm -hmm. um, a distance. Yeah. And it'll be, it looks a little differently. It'll be displayed the same way on the dashboard. It works the same way, but it's only good for the city of Northampton. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Amherst has their own. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're trying, you know, we try and see what everybody else's looks like too, mm -hmm. so that somebody you know, is it misusing it? Um, but, mm -hmm. you know, if, if it's kind of obvious that the person, you know, that there's, we, we try and extend um, the consideration to like Amherst residents if they have a temporary one. Mm -hmm. you, you know, the, your disability doesn't end at the city line. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So, <coughs> we're trying to have some common sense to mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, on a different topic, if I if I can move on to armored vehicles. These <laughs> oh armored yes, I was, yeah, that was one of our major yeah. issues. Um, yeah. um, I I know that there's a problem. Um, our parking enforcement officers um, have brought it to my attention that the transportation, the armored vehicles, are not only parking in the spots, but um, mm -hmm. will block them or will block the curb cuts mm -hmm. to allow people to get up onto the sidewalks. I've sent a letter to um, the transportation managers at the ones that use our area. Um, I have also spoken with the transportation managers. The one, the, the vehicle that parks constantly over at the Florence Savings Bank in Florence, yeah. mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. we've spoken with that drive that driving team a number of times and you know really got a lot of pushback from them. They you know, get they, very they, upset when I take their picture. Yeah, and, and you know, <laughs> when when you get something from them like, Oh, well the state, you know, we've got an agreement with the state, we can do this. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, There's I know such just to add to that, I worked with the bank um, probably all year long with um, that armored car parking there and what I was told was the armored car people are saying that they have a special 
like dispensation to be able to park there, but talking to the Mass Office on Disabilities, there is no such thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then Ruth is really the person who's encountered it the most. Um, so just recently, and I mean, I think the bank's trying to do everything it can to help that situation. Um, but I think, and I don't know if it was Ruth or one of the city councilors uh, talked to one of the enforcement officers. It was Marianne, I was with her. Who, who wouldn't issue a ticket. Yes, I, I've spoken with that individual and mm -hmm. um, we will issue a ticket. Um, mm -hmm. You don't have to put it, now, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't want one of our parking enforcement officers getting into a verbal confrontation with somebody wearing a gun, which is what these folks are, are doing. So I don't want any hotheads, but they can always call the police department to come over and also be there while they're speaking with um, the people who are transporting the money. Um, I'm sorry? to make a deposit and you know I have a problem if I can't open my car door I can't get in and out of the car so I right. tend to go to the handicap spots and it was full the, the armored car was in it. Oh. Is there a particular time of the day that that's happening? Uh, it was after morning crossing out and after we left here we usually leave here around 11 30 12 o'clock so okay. right around after that. Mm -hmm. So they're making their afternoon pickup then over that. So one of the comments that I was told from the bank official that um, the reason they park there is because they're supposed to always be in sight of their vehicle. But you know, if you go to a, a high rise business uh, building, you're, you're not always going to see your vehicle if you're up on the 10th floor. Yeah. So, you know, again, yeah. that's all part of, I'm sure, just, you know, like the state told me I could do it. Mm -hmm. so. Right. right. Hmm. Um, I, I will contact not just the transportation manager this time and if this is continuing, you know, I'll find out who that person is. Mm -hmm. I mean, because we can get interest. backup from the Mass Office on Disability as well, mm -hmm. um, if, it, if it continues. I didn't even know that it mm -hmm. happened again. Uh, yeah, I took week. pictures. He gets very upset if he's walking. They, they also go over across the street to the ATM mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. in that separate right. little building and right. walk from there over to the armored truck. And he was doing that Tuesday, and I had my cell phone, and I was snapping pictures, and the guy doing the walking got very upset. Mm -hmm. So if, if Ruth sees something like that, can she call your office or directly call the police department to say? We're there 8.30 to 4.30, Monday through Friday. If it's outside of those hours, feel free to call the police. Please call the police department. 587-1100, that's their dispatch. Oh, they're not an agency number. For the parking office. I'm sorry, what was it? We're 587 1025 at the parking clerk's office. Okay, got it. All right. There's one in the area. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. You think that on clock have the room? Yeah, yeah you, you, that they would have enough money to park somewhere else. Yeah, mm -hmm. they just collected the end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but and, and I know that there's um, been a problem on Main Street downtown um, with the armored vehicle not actually.
parking in the space but blocking the space. And mm -hmm. um, I, I have pointed out to the companies that parking in the spot, blocking access to the spot, or blocking access to the curb cut, same thing. Mm -hmm. Cannot do mm -hmm. it. Um, I don't know if there is any way to maybe um, put the word out whatever way you might think is appropriate. Um, often when people are parking in um, the, the HP spots, either people forget to hang up their placard mm -hmm. or it falls down or whatever. If they get a ticket, the, the parking enforcement officer has to issue a ticket if they cannot confirm that there is a valid handicap placard being used. So if somebody, just to, you know, double check to make sure, please, that it's been put in place. And if you do get a ticket, just contact the parking clerk's office. What, we're, what we do is we ask you to just please give us the information. We confirm that you have um, the placard and you know, the ticket will be dismissed. Um, but that said, you know, if folks will try and just remember to put the placard in place. And if that if the hang tag part of it is starting to break down, put it on the dashboard. And, and we we have to be able to see Sorry. not not your picture, but we have to see the key yeah. number and we have to see the expiration date. All right. So if somebody does get a ticket um, and they call your office, they don't then need to come in. They can just do it over the phone with you. Well, what what we'll do is um, we can confirm that they have one. Okay. But we want to make sure that it's not someone calling saying that they're that person um, and they've misused it. Mm -hmm. No, unfortunately, mm -hmm. there's. So they need it, to come in and show their well, ID. Well, well, we they can appeal it online. They can mm -hmm. appeal it in writing. Mm -hmm. um, they can have someone bring it in for them. They can fax over a copy mm -hmm. of their valid placard. Whatever. Mm -hmm. We can also yeah. confirm it through our registry hookup. Um, we have had a problem with um, caregivers using it, you know, they, they, they take someone um, grocery shopping mm -hmm. or to a doctor's appointment and then uh, the, what is it, certified personal assistant the mm -hmm. will use it inappropriately mm -hmm. uh, for, the, for themselves. Yeah. So we just want to make sure the right person is using it. Yeah. yeah. That's all. And, and just uh, sort of the other side of the coin is that, um, and you can add to this or correct it, um, that if somebody is using, you know, a HP plate or placard, uh, and they park illegally, like in a no uh, parking zone, they can get a ticket. Right. So it's not like the the handicap plate or placard gives you inalienable rights to mm -hmm. be anywhere. Right. I mean, you still have to follow mm -hmm. the law. Right. Yeah, I have something to bring up about that, if I may. Ruth has a question. Yep. Um, Walmart downtown. Yes. Handicapped people with legal handicapped placards are parking in the graded lines to the yes. side of the cars. I asked an officer, my problem again, um, I have to go into the store and have them page the people because I can't get my door open. Um, the last time I went in, I asked a police officer who was standing outside with his car if he could do something. He said they're not allowed to ticket there. Now, we know that's not the case. We checked up on that. Right, that's not the case. Um, and he got my car out for me. But they, i never seen anybody there get a ticket. Oh, I mean, we were there Saturday. Every graded area was full yeah. all the way and nothing. Uh, parking enforcement does not do that area. Um, the police department does. They do issue them for the, the parking in the spot itself and also for parking in the hash marks. If you, and they have the authority to do that, to issue that ticket. Um, so if, if it's a, maybe a new officer who thinks that because it's on private property, they can't issue okay, a ticket. I didn't think to get his name or anything, but yeah, I mean, they, like Saturday, Bill and I went shopping. They were <coughs> 
handicap tickets just while we were into Walmart. Yeah, give a call to the police department. They'll, they'll send folks down. Unfortunately, it seems like there's not enough spots there. Yeah, that'll go along with that. <laughs> Roy, you have a question? Uh, yeah. Uh, I know in Connecticut, right, uh, in private parking lots, uh, the police department can't take it because I had a woman that hit my car and drove it all the way across and the police department couldn't give her a ticket right, because it was on private property. Yeah, in Massachusetts. Yeah, right, and so I know down there and I know something that happened in Springfield and about the armored cars. In Springfield now they have like a corner lot where the armored car can you know, in case of something like robbery or something like that, they can get out of there quick. Mm -hmm. You know, that, I think that's the reason that they're doing this, you know, mm -hmm. is so that they're not blocked in, right? A car can't come parking front and back and block them in, mm -hmm. you know, right? Uh, God forbid we ever have a robbery over here, but uh, they're trying to keep a leeway to get out of there. And I know that bank up there, I can see what they're doing there. But they, you know, right, maybe park enforcement can get, set something where they can be on the main drag or something, or you know, not park in that spot, mm -hmm. but park in a place where they can. Well, you know. we've told them, you know, frankly, if they're only going to be there for a few minutes, maybe they can double park so that they're not obstructing mm -hmm. the roadway. Um, but. Choosing to park in a HP spot is not the answer. Mm -hmm. Right. It just isn't. So, we have time for maybe June had a question. one more question. June, you had a question? No. I have a question for you. You happen to mention that people didn't hang up their the flat tires. Shouldn't they have a, a sticker on their license plate? No, no. No. There's, in Massachusetts, you can either request um, from the registry to get the plate, um, or you can get the placard. And so it's either or. And just because you have the placard, there's no indication on your regular license plate that you have one. All right. Uh, yeah. I, I've seen uh, people driving their cars, their handicapped, and they had this little blue sticker on their license plate. No, that's a year. Yeah, I, I think. No, it, it, it had these, the, the, the sign. Sim the symbol. Oh, and then that was something they yeah. stuck on there themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. have to be. I have handicapped plates because I always forget to hang up the hanger. Mm -hmm. But other than well, the little what, thing that's know, right on the plate, there's no figured. stickers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, so I'd have to. No. Oh, I think I've seen them too, and I asked the guy about that. And he said there's some, he gets it through uh, AAA, I think he gets it through. And they put it on there. Mm -hmm. Right. I think that's what he said. Was he got it through AAA? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't that's know. Yeah, something they do on their own must be. It's got to mm -hmm. be, you know. Um, one other thing that we have been instrumental in getting is um, an additional uh, HP spot in the parking garage um, on the lower level. Well, that's good. Um, so. That had apparently disappeared over the years and just was never put back. So we asked them to put back. Mm -hmm. um, so one that they always continuously park in the, the parking garage in, in the handicap. Right, the maintenance equipment. Right. Yeah. So my my response to to that because I know exactly what you were talking about is um, fine you want to use that space for your equipment but then create another space yes. and one that is appropriately located mm -hmm. uh, because it has to be there there's a formula mm -hmm. now if you, if you park there do you have to pay for parking there in the parking garage people are still required to pay to park Mm -hmm. Even with the handicap mm -hmm. placard, which I find interesting, mm -hmm. that um, I question that. Um, that is controlled by Central Services, mm -hmm. the parking garage. 
um, and the new parking structure on Gothic Street has three spots in it, and people are going to have to pay the parking there too. Not but handicap. ordinarily, mm -hmm. the handicap no. does not Life pay at a meter, right? Right. right? right. So that's. Hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. have to read so that. I find that interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in the new structure, I can see that we can get by that because it's a different kind of pay to park system. And it's just, you know, how you put the money in, you get the little tag and you put it on your dashboard. Fine. But in the parking garage, you have to get out somehow with yeah. one of those cars. You know, you put it in a little thing and the arm mm -hmm. opens up and you mm -hmm. drive out. Well, how well, do you get out? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know that there's a new system, um, a, a new pay to park system that is going to be put in place in the new parking garage. Um, they're talking with vendors now, so, but there's still going to be a gate. So there's that problem is still there, and it's a municipal structure. Mm -hmm. so Who owns the garage? The city owns the garage, and central services for the city maintains the garage, is in control of the garage. So it would seem to me that we would have to start the question there. They have put somebody in the box there. Yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, those days are long gone. Um, so, is there anything else? I know I, I don't want to uh, take up more time. I, I was going to say about the placards now. Uh, a lot we of get people get the placard minutes. instead of the plate mm -hmm. because they're transferable. They're transferable. <coughs> they go with, with, the, person. with the person. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, and if Mama wants to go with her son to the doctor's, right, she can, yeah. Uh, where it, where the plate it's stationary on that vehicle, right. you know? so that's why so a lot of people have Far more convenient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Far more useful. Mm -hmm. that one. Nancy, thank you so much for coming. Well, yes, um, thank you. It's very really you. informative yeah. and helpful. Thank you um, for asking me to come and talk with you. And please don't hesitate to get in touch with me um, if you have any questions or go through Patty. She certainly knows where to find me. Mm -hmm. um, I look forward to hearing from you. It's a great week for us. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Everything I come with. Thank you. So, thank you. thank you so much. So, we have covered everything. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? <laughs> okay. We're done till December. Thank you all for coming. And always keep your fingers crossed that we don't have snow, okay? <laughs> yes, we do need to keep our fingers crossed. Oh, I thought we're going to have that tonight. Uh, oh, bite you your tongue. tongue. Are you serious? No, 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 no. I saw it. And you know, right now, I was following the map there, and it was going like this. And Pointing this and that, and where the main they got the snow. And There's been bizarre weather. Look at all those tornadoes in Illinois. There has been bizarre weather. Yeah, you know, we are like some lime cheese. <laughs> What's yeah. the, we oh, yeah, we're going to bring some lime cheese on the December meeting. We're not doing that this year. Okay. Yeah, if somebody just wants to pass, we've had oh, um, no, a little holiday get together. If, we're, if you want to bring, go ahead. We're passing on that this year. Okay. Our so next meeting is the 17th of December. No, 17th of December. Yeah. If somebody yeah. wants to, though, you could. Right? You could, yes. Um, yes sure. Right I mean, we're not prohibiting it. We're right. not saying, like, so, if you okay. do, you're in trouble. <laughs> but we're not, we're, not for, we're not formally doing that. We're not setting up a You mean we can't have a three-piece lunch? Oh, so no, bring everybody a lunch, right? <laughs> a three-piece lunch. Yeah, At 5 o'clock in the soup, afternoon. Soup, salad, and... <laughs> and an entree. And a dessert. Oh, oh yeah, and, and people to serve. And yeah. to serve it, yeah. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. Well, we're going to have... Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. I got so it. There will be no formal Christmas party. Great.